How's it going, everyone? And uh, Toast back again with another uh, commentary for you guys. Uh, this game in the background is actually a game called Rising Storm. Uh, it's a very popular game at the moment. Uh, it's a bunch of fun. It's based off a uh, game that came out, I believe, a year and a half ago. Uh, not many people know about it. Uh, it's known as Rodecoaster 2. Some of you that follow my channel might uh, have seen a couple of Rodecoaster 2 videos. Uh, in the past, uh, let me just read you a little bit of a summary on the Rising Storm website. Uh, Rising Storm is a first-person shooter game based on the Pacific Campaign of 1941 through 1945. It takes place in several famous strategic locations. The game covers the famous island hopping campaigns in the Pacific from 1942 to 1945 as the U.S. Army and Marine Corps fight it out with the Imperial Japanese Army and Special Naval Landing Forces. Featuring some of the most brutal fighting in the Pacific Theater, players are able to experience beach assaults, jungle fighting, close quarters night fighting, and more across Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, and Sapan. Sorry if I said that wrong, I, uh, not the best at pronunciation. Among other historic hotspots, the players are able to take the part of either side, American or Japanese, battling it out in full 64 player versus player, player versus player combat. Uh, so, it's definitely a worthwhile, uh, you know, uh, glance. If you haven't heard of this game, it's definitely worthwhile. Um, 64 players is really fun, especially for uh, PC users of, uh, or players of uh, Battlefield 3. Uh, good 64 player games go on there. Um, it's very interesting to play, very fun to play as well. It's not like Call of Duty, although... Uh, you can almost make it be if you play the action mode. There are three different modes in the game. Classic, realism, and action. Action being you have basically the entire HUD. You have your ammo counter, kind of. You have your magazine counter, but you can see the objectives. And uh, as you can see on this game, game mode, which is actually realism, which is kind of like the only game mode I can play, to be honest. Uh, you can basically only see your allies' names, your the capture counter in the bottom right, the flag you're capturing along with the ratio of either side in the middle, and your suppression and or sprint meter in the bottom left, which is very helpful, uh, especially when you're in a gunfight or you're trying to sprint to a location, you're running out of sprint just to get in there, you're like, oh shoot, I'm going to be a sitting duck, and uh, I'm about to get sticked right in the side here. Just wham, just got stuck. Some of you might be wondering what the hell was that all about, but uh, Cash Lebowski is one of my really good friends I've known for uh, a little while now, and thankfully to him, uh, he's the one that actually supplied me with a Rising Storm beta key, as this game is in a uh, kind of a closed beta, although closed slash public, if you do pre-order the game, uh, which I believe it is $20, I'm actually going to check that while I talk about the next thing. Um, the Xbox One... PS4 is kind of like my next topic. Uh, um, I'm, I'm kind of mixed emotions about them, to be honest. Uh, it seems the Xbox is very interesting in the way it's designed. Uh, they haven't really shown too much about the gaming aspect for the Xbox One. Uh, mon mostly, <laughs> mostly, that's a little weird. Mostly, they've uh, tried it, stressing the importance how it's. They're trying to shape the Xbox into a more of an entertainment system rather than a gaming system just strictly for gaming. They're pushing the idea that you can use the Xbox One as a more entire family uh, entertainment system instead of just one person or a couple people playing video games. Uh, so. I, I like that, although I do use a uh, cable box for TV, which I honestly don't mind. It's fine with me. And uh, the Xbox 360 I do like. Uh, I have one. I play it uh, often with uh, some of my good friends. Uh, we usually play games like Gears of War. so, And that brings me right to my next topic. Is uh, I'm really hoping that Microsoft uh, does take some sort of my backwards c uh, compatibility with the Xbox One, but unfortunately, as far as I've heard, you will need to have a another viable extension, I guess you could call it, for the Xbox One to actually be able to play Xbox 360 games, which is kind of weird and uh, saddening for me. Uh, this game, in case you're wondering, is very brutal in the fact that you do die in one to two shots. 
So you do have to play it very slowly in case you guys are wondering. Uh, you might, some of you might be like, why is he playing so slow? And why is he, you know, moving so slowly? And, you know, like, it's it's slow this game. Uh, well, not slow, but you gotta be careful. Or else you might end up uh, dead for the majority of the game. So, but... Now, uh, one thing that might that concerns me about the Xbox One that might concern some Xbox users out there, uh, depending on whether you're watching my video or not, uh, don't know, don't know that. <laughs> but uh, one thing that is kind of concerning is obviously the Xbox 360 did have a number of problems, con c uh, you know, around the Red Ring of Death, which uh, was uh known to be you know hardware failure or anything like that that you might break your system it's kind of broken at that point unless you're lucky enough like me to actually have like the rings that symbol i overheat and i just have to turn it on and turn it back on but some were not as lucky and uh thousands of people actually had uh many many problems with 360 with red ring of death so i'm, I'm really hoping they do fix the hardware glitches uh, and problems that may um be present with the Xbox One. I hope they do fix that uh, before, you know, obviously when they go into testing with it to make sure everything's okay. Uh, same thing with the PS4. Well, the PS4 did not have as many problems with um, the hardware as Xbox did for as much as I know. I don't know much about the PlayStation except that I dislike PSN. Um, long story. So, uh, I, and I'm hoping, you know, Xbox Live doesn't doesn't cost any more than it already does. And I have heard that prices of games for the consoles might actually be going up, which is which is a little bit absurd, to be honest, because, I mean, if you're paying for, you know, AAA title or most just any new game, for that matter, on a console, you are paying already 60 U.S. dollars. Uh, I'm sorry if, you know, you're using euros or pounds. I don't know the equivalent to that in U.S. dollars, but I am... Uh, using US dollar 60 so but I've heard it might be moving up to actually 70 US dollars for a, a single just triple a title or you know big game like that that's that's insane I mean considering uh, most new semi new games on Steam only cost $50 when they come out that's extraordinary um, as well uh, one thing I'm really sad to hear is as far as I know Microsoft and Sony are trying to eliminate the used game market, which is really, really unfortunate because uh, I've heard, we don't know if this is actually true, or at least I don't, because I don't follow the news too much on uh, specific topics, but so I'm, I typically do PC gaming now, but I try to stay up to date as much as I can. I've heard that new Xbox One and Xbox, Xbox 360 PS4 games will be shipping with a one use activation code which will basically bind that game to your system and account meaning if you lend the game to a friend they will have to purchase another single use code just to play the game on their system which uh, I guess is uh, an okay way but I'll be very interested to see how that plays out in the future so anyway guys uh, I hope you enjoyed this commentary just kinda like bits and pieces there and there uh, but uh, if you haven't heard of Rising Storm, definitely check it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's hundreds of thousands of videos on it on YouTube by now. Uh, it's mostly every single game that is new has hundreds of videos on it just uh, pretty soon. So if you haven't heard of it, check it out. Uh, give it a chance if you do play on PC. It's definitely worth your time. Uh, it's fun to play, especially when you have some good commanders. Unfortunately, I muted my... <laughs> got blown up while I was cooking a nade and it rolled right into my team there but uh, definitely check it out um, I do have the uh, microphone transmit or transmit a volume uh, muted so you can't hear you guys but they're probably you know playing tactical so if you're wondering why that's <laughs> people do talk in the mic so if you're in a team play uh, that's good so it is there I just <laughs> that muted anyway I don't know why I keep getting sitting on this topic uh, anyway, guys, remember if you enjoyed to leave a like and or comment, it really helps me out, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.
Hey, 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 steady, steady, steady now. All right, all right, you're on top, D'Artagnan, you're on top. What now? Uh, you were looking for the dark one, right?